give him the microphone. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I'm seated uh, in front of, uh, behind Bishop Hamala, and I want to make a special plea that you give him to educate us and preach to us on the importance and doctrine of fasting, religion, and the path to heaven. Honorable Speaker, I'm a Catholic, and we Catholic believe in Matthew 6, verse 16 to 18, and the Lord, the Honorable Speaker, read us written, and when you fast, do not choose to become gloomy like the hypocrites. For they alter their faces so that their fasting may be apparent to men. And then I say to you that they have received their reward. Honorable Speaker, the biblical position about fasting, I'm not a pastor, not a Methodist, so I will not bother to delve into it, is that it is supposed to bring you closer to God. It's not supposed to take you closer to the grave. Honorable Speaker, I find it impossible to believe that a human being with the proper faculty can be brainwashed to this level that to fast to the point of death even the most radical people on this earth have got value for life and the value for life starts with your life and the life of your neighbor and in the bible is written they ask who is your neighbor a neighbor is anybody who has got a breathing soul whether it's a human being or a domestic animal honorable speaker the level of radicalization pastors and the evangelical uh, cults and religion is something the nation and as a country we must look at it honestly and seriously. Honorable Speaker, these, some of these cults, I want to call them cults, go to an extent, Honorable Speaker, asking their members to contribute the little they have to their pastors hear themselves they sleep hungry. Many times, Honorable Speaker, and we stand accused all of us who are Christians. We would go to church to contribute to buy a car for a pastor, but we never contribute to take a mem our fellow congregant to church. We will never contribute to take to a child for a fellow mem prayer group member to school, but we be very we will be in a hurry to buy a pastor or whatever you call them top range vehicle. And there are very ridiculous cases that you must treat the pastor much better than yourself. Is this kind of brainwashing, Honorable Speaker, that's leading us to this level? And I want to put it very clear, Honorable Speaker, this is a deranged doctrine, it's not biblical, and as somebody has said, and as Bishop has said there, this is a psychological problem, it's not a religious problem. There is no religion, Honorable Speaker, that condones death. There is no religion, Honorable Speaker, that can make and anybody can get gratification in seeing somebody's suffering, Honorable Speaker. We must come to terms with their positions. Honorable Speaker, Article 32 provides freedom of worship, freedom for expression of religious belief. But indeed, it's not the absolute right, Honorable Speaker. The state has got a duty and has got a responsibility, Honorable Speaker, to regulate how church behaves how church conduct their, their activities. There is no reasons whatsoever to shirk the responsibility and then now hope in, in modern helicopters to go to Kilifi to showcase their cases. Honorable Speaker, we politicians stand accused. Many of us have glorified religion to a point that we call church services, we call congregations, we call whatever we call to go and pray for the economy to improve, for the rains to come. And many of us, Honorable Speaker, this is the kind of seeds we are sowing and this is what we are reaping for this country, Honorable Speaker. It is time we stop this hypocrisy as stated in Matthew chapter 16 and preach the correct gospel and tell people the truth, not lies, that cause them to cause harm, personal harm to themselves. Honorable Speaker, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, Honorable Member, Member Forangwe. I 